Hey friends, today we're going to be reading this book titled Puss in Boots by Jerry Pinky, written and illustrated by him. Okay, this fiction folk tale is a short story that includes magical characters and events. It is set in the distant past and features royal characters and talking animals, a dapper cat named Puss in Boots. Nestled in the hills of a quaint village sat a grain mill. The miller had three hard-working sons, a donkey and a cat. When the miller died, his belongings were divided in this order. The oldest son received the mill, the middle son, the donkey, and the youngest named Benjamin got the cat. This worried Benjamin enormously. Just how can I make my way in this life? He sighed. With only a cat, the cat overheard. Have some boots made for me, he said, and give me a strong sack with a drawstring. I just might be able to help you find your fortune. Benjamin knew his cat to be clever, so he agreed. How gallant the, the cat looked in his boots, standing upright on his hind legs. From that day on, Benjamin called him Puss in Boots. Puss went about filling the sack with cabbage leaves and carrots, then hauled it into the deep woods where he knew there was an abundance of rabbits. He laid down a trail of bite-sized bits, stretched out as though he were dead, and waited. Before long they came, one hop at a time, one foolish rabbit took the bait and jumped right into the sack. Instantly Puss pulled the strings, knotted them, and headed for the king's castle. He knew that a fresh rabbit was just the right person to offer the king and a way of introduction. Once inside the royal chambers, Puss bowed and placed the rabbit at the king's feet. I have brought your majesty a gift from my youngest master, the Count of Carabas, with his compliments. Tell your count I gladly accept, the king responded. It will make for a delicious meal. The following day, Puss went hunting again. He knew where the partridge fed. This time he hung by his ankles in a tree with the sack's drawstrings in his paws and kernel of corn as his bait. Again, with great patience, he waited. Before long, he had caught a partridge. Puss returned to the castle. To the delight of the king, Puss continued to surprise the king with gifts. One day a rabbit, the next day a partridge, one day a fish, the next day a pheasant. So it went until the king sent gold in gratitude to the Count of Carabas and had a special feathered hat made for Puss. One day as he was leaving, Puss saw the king's men preparing to take his majesty and the princess for a carriage outing. Right then, Puss hatched a plan. Rushing home, he said to Benjamin, if you do as I suggest, more fortune will come to you. First, go wash off the dust of the day in the river. Leave the rest to me. Benjamin did just as Puss asked. After all, his had his cat not supplied enough gold for him to provide for himself and even help his brothers? While Benjamin was bathing, Puss proceeded to hide his master's clothing in a hollow tree. No sooner were they hidden than the king's carriage approached. Help! Help! the cat cried out. My lord went for a swim, Puss told the king and his coachman. And thieves came and stole his clothes. Now the count is in the water and can't get out. If he stays in much longer, he will freeze. Immediately the king commanded his coachman to rescue the count. Benjamin didn't know what his cap was up to, but he played along. The king's young daughter sent a footman back to the palace to fetch clothing fit for a lord. And soon Benjamin was out of the river and outfitted in fine garments. He felt grand, especially when he was invited to join the king and princess for the rest of their outing. And this pleased Princess Daniela very much. For now, she would have someone, someone her age to talk with. <laughs> 
In the meantime, the cat, pleased that his plans were succeeding, went ahead of them until he came to a dense forest. He knew these lands belonged to a, to a rich and evil sorcerer. When he met up with the countrymen who were clearing away tall trees, he spoke to them in the name of this sorcerer. The king's carriage will be passing by soon, he said. If you do not tell the king that this forest belongs to the Count of Carabas, you shall be ground up and made into sausage. The woodsmen bowed their heads and, trembling, they all agreed. Soon the carriage passed by, and then the king called out to the woodsman, To whom does this vast forest belong? The Count of Carabas, they all answered. Meanwhile, Puss, running ahead, met with a group of reapers. The king's carriage will be passing by soon, said he in the name of the sorcerer. If you do not tell the king that these fields of wheat belong to the Count of Carabas, you shall be ground up and made into sausage. Then off he ran. Moments later, the carriage passed. Who owns all of this land and its golden crops? called the king. With shaky voices, all of the reapers shouted, The Count of Carabas! Puss soon came to the large estate where the sorcerer dwelled. After passing over a drawbridge, he entered the castle's courtyard with its lush grounds. There he spotted many industrious gardeners. The king's carriage will be arriving here soon he said in the name of the sorcerer. If you do not tell the king that these flowers bloom for the Count of Carabas, you shall be ground up and made into sausage. Then Puss marched up to the stairs, right into the sorcerer's chambers. Bowing, the cunning cat said, I've heard you've had great powers. The sorcerer sneered. Beyond all that you can imagine, he crowed, with a laugh that rattled everything on his table. Convince me! Puss responded, I can turn myself into any animal I choose, boasted the sorcerer, and with that he let out a ferocious growl, leaped into the air, and became a great bear. Puss was terrified, but after... Gathering his wits, he said, A bear is so much like you, you great sorcerer. The bear is strong and fearless. How about something graceful and lean? Can you turn yourself into a deer? That's easy, snorted the sorcerer. Oh, how high that deer sprang before the sorcerer turned back into himself. Amazing, Puss exclaimed. But do you have the power to change yourself into the smallest and weakest of creatures? Like, say, a mouse? The flattery had made the sorcerer quite silly. Dear cat, he said, just watch. Instantly, a squeak was heard. Before the sorcerer could scurry out of the room on his tiny mouse paws, Puss had gobbled him right up. Just about the time that the king's carriage crossed the drawbridge and entered the magnificent castle garden. My countryman, the king called out, to whom does this enchanting place belong to? The Count of Carabas, they told him, tossing bouquets. As the carriage arrived at the staircase up to the grandest of castles, even larger and more magnificent than the king's own palace, Count Carabas climbed in out to escort the princess and king inside. When Puss saw them, he knew that his work was done. Your majesty, the cat announced, you have arrived at the castle of my master, Count Carabas. Puss led them into the great hall, which glittered with gold and precious jewels. That day the king dared that the princess would become the countess of Carabas. Soon bells were ringing throughout the entire countryside, announcing the royal wedding. The very next day, His Majesty the King bestowed on Puss and Boots the royal title of Prime Minister. Puss never chased mice again. That is, never except for his own amusement. The End <laughs>